Fair. This is Danielle again, a community organizer at PsychLodge, this organization which creates a closure platform for data and science. This is yet another snippet of the first real world data session. A session we had on March 22nd where closure practitioners shared their experiences and hopes in using closure for data and science. Most of the session is not shared publicly, just internally in the chat. Sometimes we share some little parts, like this presentation by Adham Ombran, who tells the story of creating a data project in closure in the last year. So enjoy Adham's presentation and see you on the next times. Yeah, maybe Adham, maybe you would like to say briefly a little bit about who you are and what you are about. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, definitely. Uh, I'm uh, 20, 23 years old. I graduated uh, from a business and economics uh, college. Uh, I majored in finance and banking. Uh, I work with uh, Clojure professionally. I built a backend that serves uh, uh, data to a dash uh, to a frontend that uh, serves uh, dashboards to end users. Yes, great. So uh, my presentation will be about the backend for iData. Uh, I will go over what's iData, why did we choose Clojure, the components that we have in the backend, the general workflow for uh, doing the data analysis and how we implement the various endpoints and some closing thoughts. Uh, iData is an Iraqi initiative that aims to activate the role of data and decision making through the implementation of data driven products and services. We have collaborated with uh, various entities such as the United Nations Development uh, Program and their accelerator, accelerator Labs to implement some dashboards for the uh, uh, upcoming digital economy. We have published uh, four interactive dashboards that cover various domains from like the banking sector to the state budget for the country. And our latest achievement uh, was building an in-house uh, assessment platform uh, the, uh, for the digital competency assessment, it supports over 80 questions uh, and there and its uh, dashboard is also currently in the works. Uh, the digital competency assessment is a framework for assessing the digital competency of youth in a country. It, it was developed by the JRC of the European Commission's Science and Knowledge Service. And before I go any further, I should do a quick showcase of the website because it is up it's on iraqidata.com uh, in both uh, english and arabic and let's go into any of the dashboards the front end is view it is by, uh, powered by high charts and the data that uh, powers these graphs is all being served from a closure backend uh, as you can see, we have everything from static charts to char to variable charts that they can input and change depending on that. And here are the four dashboards very quickly, various data shapes for various uh, types of charts and various types of analysis. Everywhere, just data. Let's go over the statistics. Uh, recently, Clay, uh, uh, high charts support was added to Clay, and so the ability to get charts similar to this is now like uh, supported in enclosure, like out of the out of the gate in through Clay. So this is not uh, restricted to a back end front end uh, architecture. So back to the presentation. Uh, in some numbers, we have had closure in production since August of 2023. Uh, Datomic is also being used as our database uh, since October of 2023. We have had over the 13,000 transactions in the database, and we have over uh, 90 API endpoints that are being used to serve the data and do other forms of uh, authentication authorization for user logins. Uh, we moved to closure from an R shiny uh, background. 
And the reason for that is we wanted a, a backend that is robust, is something that can handle hundreds of requests. We wanted something that's fast and responsive. Uh, we wanted interactive development. We wanted the ability to change the shape of uh, data, the like anything from the name of a key to the entire shape of the data, like just flipping the X and Y axes or doing more general manipulations and having that be available to the front-end developers very, very quickly. Uh, we wanted to use a, a set of tested platforms and we found the JVM and the AWS to be uh, very good uh, choices for both deployment and the cloud utilities. And Clojure answered these needs through its various libraries. Uh, the backend server itself is a running Jetty, which does the handling of requests and responses very, very quickly out of the box. We are seeing our requests being served in uh, an average of uh, less than 100 milliseconds, and this is just out of the box. I'm not really doing anything beyond uh, the analysis and preparing the shape of the data and providing the route for the data. The interactive development comes from running the backend itself in a REPL session in an EC2 instance and, and connecting to it uh, from my local machine and just evaluating the code and now the backend gets reevaluated and then you, the front-end developers can see the updated changes through a Swagger dashboard. Uh, the JVM and the AWS provide everything from the for, for example, AWS Cognito for the uh, user pools, uh, S3 for the uh, data where, like our data is currently in, this, in Datomic, which uses S3. Uh, our server is on EC2, so we are running uh, on the cloud and uh, the various co uh, Cognitech uh, libraries, I think uh, there is, like, there is uh, a main one that does the AWS, uh, dry, like AWS uh, inclusion in Clojure. It's, very, very nice and very, very ergonomic to work with. Other bonuses that come from using Clojure is its uh, functional style and approach, which lends itself quite well to data manipulation and processing. Uh, sometimes a set of processes can be just reduced to a number of functions that are applied over various data sets to get like various shapes just from a small number of functions. Uh, Datomic, uh, and for those who don't know, uh, Datomic, it's a temporal database uh, whereby you don't really have tables, but you define a schema for your data and you transact that data over time. And it is temporal in the sense that any new transaction does not delete previous data, but it uh, writes uh, like a progression in time. So your value of X today is one, tomorrow it is two. You can always come back to one. You can always check the state of the DB on that date. Uh, and it uses data log as a way of querying the data. Uh, so we are not using SQL in any way at the moment. Uh, and we have found the query style to lend itself well to data analysis. Uh, for example, we ha I have created a very small query-like engine where I provide it uh, keys and values for what I want from a DB, and it can query that data and get it to me in a table, like in a table, uh, in a data set format, and it is very ergonomic to work with. Uh, the libraries we mainly use for data analysis are Tablecloth and TechML Dataset. They're powerful, they're efficient, they're fast, they're honestly amazing for everything data. Uh, the components of the backend, I will discuss uh, very quickly and briefly six main components, the authorization, the dashboards, the DB, the documentation, the open API, and uh, testing. Uh, I've defined a dashboard to be a set of APIs that the front end can request with optional arguments, for example, a query or a path for, uh, for example, if the if the endpoint wants to serve a the data for a certain city or a certain part of the population, uh, or if there is form data, for example, we have uh, various uh, we have a contact us form, we have a feedback form for what uh, for for people to request a certain dashboard to be uh, sent. So we also handle all of that with uh, closure. Uh, there's uh, the shape of the data coming out of closure itself is closure data structures, but it is being transformed to JSON with the Reddit content negotiation feature. Reddit is a library for uh, doing uh, routing and very fast data-driven routing in uh, closure. 
the authorization is a set of APIs and functions uh, that the backend uses to resolve anything from authorization to authenticating requests, sign-ins, uh, assigning uh, certain privileges to certain routes. So we have certain users, for example, ma management, marketing, they have access to certain dashboards that are not available to the public. Uh, usually this is done before publishing them to the public to you know get uh, feedback and uh, anything else. So we're handling all of that uh, through closure. Uh, the DB functions and APIs deal with the atomic mainly, just creating the client, establishing connection to the uh, cloud database and the connections are required to do the to request the data and transact and add data. The documentation uh, displays itself in multiple forms. Every anything from our pull requests themselves requiring uh, like function documentation strings to be included, the schemas for the functions themselves, what inputs they accept, what outputs, what their outputs should look like, and these schemas are being used in the tests that facilitate a sort of a safety net before deployment. Uh, our internal documentation includes everything from the shape of the data requested by a front end. So there is this communication step that's basically the front end saying, hey, we want to display this bar chart. We want this key to have the data of this shape. So just have it in that shape and serve it. This is internally documented. And we have some internal documentation for onboarding. Uh, the asterisk and the star is because we are planning on making that uh, documentation public. Uh, currently, the backend is a team of one, which is just me. Uh, uh, we are looking to uh, onboard members uh, very soon, uh, mainly locally. And uh, since as far as I know, I'm like the only, like I'm the only closures I know of and uh, within the area. So we will have to do the training. So we have been uh, writing the some uh, documentation about this uh, matter. Uh, Open API for those who don't uh, use it much is a sort of a dashboard that displays the various uh, API endpoints that a front end can call. And this facilitates uh, communication between the front end and the back end. So when something breaks, the front end can say, hey, back end, this particular endpoint is breaking on these options. Or for example, when I update uh, the change log for the back end, I can point to, hey, check the endpoint here and here and here. These are new and these endpoints changed. And I can also include various examples in these endpoints to facilitate uh, the uh, front end work. Uh, our testing mainly uh, concerns itself with the shape of the data. So the shape of the data sets, what columns, how many columns there are, are there, what are the names, what are the type of the values. And the same goes for our, the private functions and the public API, the private functions do most of the manipulation. Uh, so I need to check that what goes into the function, what goes out of the function makes sense. Uh, for example, I can use the previously mentioned documentation to make sure that the output of these functions matches the shape that is wanted by the front end. And the same goes for the public APIs that are available to the front end. They are also they also get their own tests for their shape. Uh, the workflow for the uh, like creating new endpoints and doing the data processing is mainly these four steps whereby I create a route endpoint. I create a component for a particular dashboard such as a bar chart or a map chart. And then I load its data, whether it comes from a CSV file, Google Sheets or Datomic. And then I do the data processing uh, for all of that, for that loaded data. Uh, until I get it into the shape that is requested by the front end and that uh, we want to display. And then I just commit, like add that, commit it, update it, and inform the front end that this uh, endpoint is now available. And then I move on to the uh, endpoint after that. Uh, some examples for this process for the loading of the data from sheets. Uh, uh, basically, I can just provide a, an ID for the sheet and the name. For example, this is a sheet with, that has the page called Actions, and I want its data to be written to a CSV file called Data to CSV. Uh, loading the data is also a similar process. For example, I'm binding the 
value of loading the CSV file after changing, for example, the name of a column uh, from a string to a keyword, I'm binding it to this uh, variable called undergrad university by provenance. Uh, and after that comes the data processing. For example, this is a processing of a data set that takes an input, for example, as we just saw in the uh, in the dashboards themselves, there are inputs for years, for the uh, for various categories, for the cities themselves. So all of this comes from the front end with its requests. It goes to the functions. The functions just do the manipulation. The, this is a, the tablecloth library, uh, alias the STC. I'm doing some selection, some grouping, some aggregation, some renaming, and more aggregation. And then at the end, I'm taking the rows and taking the first item. Uh, an example for how the API in Swagger looks, this is the API endpoints for the country profile. They are very simple, very obvious. Like for each uh, chart, there is a, for example, line, a bar. For uh, others, there is a variable for the, for example, what faculty, what student, like what category of students, what category of faculty. So this also goes and is uh, available in the Swagger uh, board. And this is, uh, again, how the communication happens between the backend and the frontend, because our closure only exists on the backend for the website at the moment. Uh, this wraps up, uh, like, mainly everything, and uh, some closing thoughts on closure for this uh, use case, which we have had for about seven months now. Closure has a great mix of speed and ergonomics to develop data solutions, and the solutions that you develop are robust in the sense that you can always come back, do the evaluation of the namespace, and you get the same data back, assuming you wrote your functions in a pure way. Uh, it's fast, it de uh, deploys to the JVM, it, which gives you many options for scaling the uh, deployment later. There is a lot of potential for the data ecosystem, which is why I am in this group. I would really love to be involved with the development of the tools, the documentation, the practices. I want to hear from other people. How are, uh, how are they using Clojure? How are they learning Clojure? Uh, and everything data related in closure like it's it's an expressive language it has a an amazing fast feedback loop for developing and its tooling is always growing and i really really love that for like for the language and i have like my belief in it uh thank you for listening this was very rapid fire uh, as daniel said there is potential for many more presentations to come for particular aspects of uh, the work i'm doing and for other projects that i am working on uh, if you want to contact me personally my email is here for anything business related uh, my uh, my business email and my manager uh, real who could not make it to today's meeting to due to scheduling conflict uh, if he was here, I would like to thank him because he is the person who basically gave the green light for using Clojure in production, even though I'm basically the only person in the country who knows the language. That's kind of a tough business self. So thanks to him. Yeah, I'm using Clojure today, and you can always visit us at uh, iraqidata.com. And thank you again for listening. And any questions, I am up for that.